I swear to God, it was more peaceful in the Amazon than it is here early in the morning. The eucalyptus trees are in flower and the bees are having a field day. The honey's good, I like it, but uh, when they're busy at work at six o'clock in the morning, right above your head, and I, I mean literally right above your head. Now the dogs are barking. <laughs> what a way to wake up. A pair of birds that you're desperate to film and you've only actually filmed for 30 seconds in six weeks. A million bees, two dogs, chickens and cockerels. And all that before half past six in the morning. I wonder what the rest of the day holds. And of course the ever-present mosquitoes. I have to drive into town and get myself some, uh, get myself some uh, mosquito net very soon, otherwise I'm not going to have much blood left. to spend the day in the visitor's centre trying to catch up on uh, backing up some of the footage and switching it to a different hard drive for security. Two hard drives in an air-conditioned room opposite a pretty girl who speaks English or go and get sunburnt trying to film the Eagles. It's a tough one. minimum two uh, up to about three weeks left with the eagles I'd say in the nest um, until they fledge they will return but I'm desperate I'm really desperate to film the adults flying in it's eluded me so far I know it sounds ridiculous but it's not as easy as it sounds because they can travel they can fly in very quickly and if you're scanning the skies looking in the for them flying and they come in from another direction it's all over so quickly and some of the locations I've been so far have been restricted with the with the views the last time I tried the eagle flew in directly I was on the opposite side of the reservoir the eucalyptus tree where the nest is it flew in directly behind the nest 14 hours I'd waited 14 hours and most of it was in hot sun with no shade and it could have flown in from any angle and it chose the one directly behind the tree and I saw it the last two seconds of its flight and I had my hand was halfway halfway to the camera to press the record button so it's just potluck in which direction they fly in. So it's either visitor center, pretty girl, air conditioned room, and a coffee machine, and catch up. Or wait for Pepe to open, grab the kayak, and then head to the reservoir. An hour's drive over a dusty, bumpy track, and spend the next 14 hours I 
I really cannot wait for July when that temperature hits 40 plus degrees and a bit of an August if I'm here. This I'm really looking forward to. I nearly drove over a cat two nights ago and I don't mean a domestic cat I mean one of the world's rarest cats that I'm here to film I was driving back from a day at the reservoir filming the eagles and it was 11 o'clock at night and luckily um, I stick into my normal 15 kilometers an hour a for so I don't destroy the oil sump on the car and B because there are possibilities that you will encounter wild deer or a lynx on the road um, so for this reason I drive really slowly and I came around a bend and this lynx just appeared literally a meter in front of the car and just walked straight in front of me. Uh, I slammed on the brakes and it stopped. It literally stopped dead in its tracks and I couldn't see it. The front of the Toyota Previa has got quite a long nose and quite a, a, a deep dashboard and I didn't hear a bump or feel anything luckily but when I looked out the window the front bumper was about 20 centimeters from this animal's head and it just stood there and looked at me and I have no idea what I would have done at 11 o'clock at night if I just killed one of the world's rarest cats. And, but a lot of the people here drive very quickly, or much quicker than I do along this road. And there's a guy who works for the, at the dam for the local electricity company, Endesa. And uh, if he'd have been driving like his normal Fernando Alonso uh, impersonation that he does on his, on his big Land Rover every day, the cat would have been He'd have been pussy pancake, believe me. It's unbelievable how fast some of them drive in, the, in on these roads when they know that there's a huge amount of deer around, wild boar, and a number of, uh, of these Iberian lynx, which, you know, a couple of hundred left in the wild. Is, uh, it's much why it's the world's second rarest cat, but they don't seem to care, some of them. It's, uh, it's their job. and. appeared in my mouth seriously I actually thought I'd hit it I didn't feel anything but my first thought as I hit the brakes was I'm going to kill this beautiful male Iberian lynx it had no collar it didn't have a tracking collar on so but that would have taken some explaining wouldn't it pulling into town at 12 o'clock at night at the Guardia Seville with a dead lynx in my arms to report it the one who's here to film them Motivated, I never will. God, the sun's not even up yet. Oh. Home. <laughs> that is home. It has been for the last two months. Right. 